Hello, everybody. I hope you are well. Good evening, good day, good morning, good afternoon. I'm not sure what time of day it is where you're at or when you're watching, but here we are, friends. It is a fine Tuesday because in the world of Pokemon Go, we have yet entered into another event, which is fantastic, the Rivals Week, which frankly surprised me because, well, they've released not one but two new Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Welcome back to Shelby on Safari, where I, a wild animal biologist, but also a Pokemon trainer, love to do animal and pulp culture comparisons. And so in today's live stream, we are going to be looking into three things. First up, what it means for Pokemon Go Rivals Week. What is out there to catch? What are some research quest field tasks that you need to find by scanning your Pokestops to be able to catch some of these new friends? Then in part two, we're gonna be looking at the two new Pokemon that are featured, Scrulp and Cluncher, and see what the Pokedex has to say about these friends. And then last but certainly not least, we will be talking about the real life animals that are like Pokemon that I think are relatively amazing and definitely, definitely are like real world Pokemon. Guys, I was so stoked to be able to do this comparison for you guys tonight because I learned a lot of new things, which is one of the reasons why I love doing this channel is because I get to do some research and find out some amazing things about some really epic animals. So I hope you guys are all well. Hopefully you have had some good luck in the first day of this Pokemon Rivals Week challenge. There is a lot going on, so let's get right into it. Hello, Alice. Welcome. So for the Pokemon Go Rivals Week, well, it started today, 10 a.m. Uh, on this fine Tuesday, the 13th of April. My goodness. Golly gee, how are we already in the middle of April? But it will be ending this Sunday, April 18th at 8 p.m. So a fair amount of time, which is rather nice to be able to catch some new friends, which apparently are rivals. There are more spawns of certain friends, but the main thing that's happening this week, and one of the reasons why I went out on an extra long run today, was to try to find Skrelp and Cluncher, the two Pokemon that we will be focusing on in both our, well, the live stream tonight and then the animal comparison later on once we get through what you can find during Pokemon Go Rivals Week. Uh, also, oh yeah, I should say that earlier today I did a Fury Inform Landorus raid, which was a five star. There's about eight of us and we did it in pretty good time. So yeah, that was quite fun having that release, the good old Landorus genie type Pokemon. Uh, I'm not really a fan, but uh, I know, hot take. But, <laughs> you know, gotta complete that Pokedex, guys. Ah, hello, John. Oh, you caught a shrimp. Oh, how fabulous. Are you talking about uh, Contra or real shrimp? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe you caught one of the animals that we'll be comparing uh, good old Contra to later on. Guys, I can't wait to tell you about this animal. I cannot believe that it's an actual animal. It was so fun. Uh, who else? Oh, yes. Thumb Twitcher McGroovin. So excited about Wild Rivals Week. Oh, I'm glad you're excited. I can't wait to hear your guys' favorite rivals in the Pokemon franchise as well. So let me know in the comments because, I mean, there's plenty of choose from. You don't have to pick just Pokemon, which we're focusing on in Pokemon Go, of course. But when it comes to like the anime as well, I mean, obviously we got to mention Ash and Gary. Hello, like the original. Well, actually, the original would be red and blue, wouldn't it? But there we are. <laughs> always think of Ash and Gary. So yes, please let me know. Um, yeah, your favorite rivals. Is, is it anybody of the new form? I mean, uh, what's his face? Uh, Leon. There we go. I can think. Yeah, like Leon and the dragon guy, like those fun rivals. Let me know. Let me know. I'm curious to see what your guys is saying. But anyways, with Rivals Week, we need to get through this because we got a lot to talk about. So there are, yeah, the new Globals Raids Challenge. I don't know if you guys saw that. It popped up last night where as trainers all over the world, we got to come together and do a lot of raids to be able to unlock two-time catch Stardust. Now, y'all know me. If you saw my previous live stream about Snivy Community Day, I am all about that Stardust. Got to get it because I use it quite quickly to power up my friends and, uh, you know, trade 
it's useful for trades and things like that. So definitely guys, if you are able to do as many raids as possible in the next few days, so that way we can unlock that challenge for everybody. And uh, yeah, oh, that's a cute little sticker there, Alice. I'm always up for cats and boxes. Uh, yeah, speaking of cats and boxes, really quick, the rivals in this house are Maui and Kiana. I would say they are rivals for sure. Maui and Kiana do not get on. Um, I mean, they'll stand like in the same room together, but I think Maui gets quite jealous because I am quite the soft spot for Kiana. And so he'll kind of like, meh, like annoy her and she'll be like, meh. and then Maui will like fight more. And then I obviously get involved and separate it. Uh, but yeah, those are the rivals in our house. So yes, <laughs> Team Maui. Oh no. Oh, I'm, you're Team Tammy. Come on, let's be real. Let's be real, Alice. So with Rivals Week, I could talk about my accounts for days. That would be a whole other live stream. <laughs> in fact, Maui hosting his own live stream. Could you imagine? Oh my gosh. There is exclusive event research. Now guys, this is super duper important. Super duper important. John mentioned he caught a quancher earlier. Now, uh, one of the big, big things to keep in mind, especially because Strelp, you need 400 candies to evolve it. Clauncher, you need 50. If you're like me and out in the boonies and maybe not be able to have access to all these new Pokemon, evolve a Blastoise. Mega evolve a Blastoise or a Gyarados because then you'll have that added water candy um, bonus. So definitely, if you know, you know, if you see on your little screen, like, oh, a Clauncher is nearby or a Skrelp, quickly Mega Evolve a water type Pokemon, either Blastoise or Gyarados to get that extra candy on top of, of course, feeding the wild Pokemon as many berries as you can. So the event exclusive research that you need to know is win a raid. If you scan a Pokestop and you get win a raid, then you can either get a Clauncher or a Skrelp. So definitely look out for those ones. But if you're like my husband and didn't get enough uh, candies to mega evolve a low bunny, the one you're going to be wanting to look out for is the win in the Go Battle League because you'll get uh, 20, I believe, mega low bunny candy. So definitely keep your eyes out for those two field research tasks just by spinning the Pokestops. Again, that's during Rivals Week, which is happening from today, Tuesday at 10 a.m. until Sunday, this Sunday, the 18th at 8 p.m. Now, appearing in the wild, really quick, we should just briefly mention these because, of course, it's Rivals Week and we're talking about the rivalry between some Pokemon and even some Pokemon trainers and even amongst our cats. So with all of the Pokemon I'm about to mention, the shiny form is available with them. So, of course, you have Nidoran and Nidoran, the male and female versions. You have Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, Electabuzz, Magmar which of course we have shinies for because they were community day, uh, Makuhita and Metatite. And then the last one is good old Zangoose and Seviper, which is quite nice because of course those used to be kind of regional forms. So with all the ones I just mentioned, and also in case you're panicking, I'll put it in the description down below once uh, the live stream is done. So you don't have to memorize it. Uh, but of course, since you've been playing today, you probably already know who's in the wild, but that's who the more wild spawns are, which is nice. So definitely be sure to shiny check all of our friends. But then briefly, as I knock my computer, you have five kilometer eggs, a few friends as well, like Machop, Tyrogue, Electkid, Magby, Makuhita, Metatite, Zangoose, and Survivor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want Skrelp and Clauncher, that is for sure. So, ah, yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, well done, Rita. Team Kiana. Good choice. Good choice. And yeah, thanks, John. Yeah, I'd like to think sometimes we have the, some smart ideas here on Shelby on Safari. <laughs> you have Barbie Tree, but yeah, definitely to help get you those candies. Because as you may know, you need 50 candies of Clauncher to evolve it. And then you need 400 for a Skrelp, which actually, John, I'd be curious to see. Have you caught a Skrelp yet? I haven't. I'm rather rather sad. Uh, but yes, and Alice, ooh, you like Magmar. Interesting, interesting. Good old fire type. Uh, briefly in raids for Pokemon Go Rivals Week, there's a few interesting ones like Nidoqueen and Nido King, as well as Zangoose and Seviper. The shinies for those are quite cool. I know Zangoose is blue. I haven't quite got one yet. Um, and Survivor looks pretty rad. So definitely try to do some of those raids. Like I mentioned earlier, there's that global competition happening where we got to do like a bajillion raids. I think it's like 40 million or something ridiculous to get that two times Stardust catch bonus. So try your luck at raids if you can. 
Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely that uh, mega evolving of either Blastoise or Gyarados. If you know you're going to be getting a Skrelp or Clauncher, or maybe um, I know a few people catch or get quite a few raids, uh, or not raids, what am I talking about? The field research. If you do have quite a few of the win a raid field research tasks, if you can store those up and wait to catch like three of them at a time, you know, once you've had Mega Evolved, a Blastoise or a Gyarados, then you can get even more candies. But uh, I'm not that patient. As soon as I get the field research task and I finish it, I'm like, I want to find out what I got. Uh, but uh, yeah, patience is a virtue, but one I don't have. So friends, that was really quickly Rivals Week in a nutshell. And the reason why I went so quickly, sorry about that, friends. Uh, like I said, I'll put all the bits and bobs that you need to know, including links to like Leak Duck, one of my favorite sites, to have it in graphic form uh, down in the description below after the live stream. But the main juicy bit of this live stream, as you guys know, here on Shelby on Safari, we do plenty of pop culture animal comparisons because I am a Pokemon trainer, but also a wild animal biologist. And I love comparing both of these guys and looking into the real world animals around us that I feel are like Pokemon. <laughs> and tonight is no exception. For Rivals Week, we are going to be looking into Skrulp and Clauncher and then their real life animal counterparts, in my opinion. So... If you enjoy things of that nature, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I am making my way to a thousand subscribers and I'm so excited and ever so thankful for all of you for joining this safari along with me. So let's dive right in, quite literally, into Skrelp and Clauncher friends. So, uh, <laughs> to clenching into it. <laughs> I like you. You have good taste and humor. You, oh, I love it. I love a good pun. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys were in there for the excellent Togepi live stream, but oh my gosh, there is nothing like throwing excellent puns and all sorts of so perfect punny humor. I love it. Uh, so Skrelp is a poison and water type that was first introduced in Generation 6. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, like I know my friend Alice, uh, you might not be familiar with some of these near Pokemon. You have the luxury of being on either your phone or your computer. Just pull up another tab, listen to me ramble on, and take a look at this really radical looking Pokemon. It is so cute. In fact, it's known as the Mock Kelp Pokemon, which gives us a bit of a hint into uh, what goes on in its daily life, per se. So it does evolve into Dra Algae, yeah, that's fun to say, at level 48 in the game. So it does take a while for it to evolve up. And uh, in Pokemon Go, I believe it is 400 candies. That's what I've seen. As I mentioned, I haven't yet had the pleasure of catching one in Pokemon Go. But uh, John, let me know if you... <laughs> <laughs> it's really throwing off my groove. Oh my gosh. Yeah, some scrulp with that. Good lord. I can't wait to see what else you come up with. Whew. Yeah, please come to all the live streams and just make me chuckle. Come up with more of that. That is fantastic. What was I talking about? John, let me know in the comments if you've caught scrulp and if it is indeed 400 candies. Because uh, that's going to take a long time. It's like Noibat. Oh my gosh. Do you know how many times I tried to catch this darn toot Noibat? And I was so paranoid about 10k eggs. I was like, on Mondays, I'd be like, oh, gotta have space for a 10k egg. And then I found out that they didn't come in the weekly Monday 10k eggs. And I was devastated because I've been trying for months. And everybody else just kept catching Noibat in the wild. But here I was now. In fact, I actually named mine uh, Barbara after Barbara Gordon, because it was a female. And uh, that's that woman. Batgirl. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my Noi Bat. And uh, spoilers for Friday's episode, it is Bat Appreciation Day on Saturday. And so it's actually a collaboration video with my buddy Cole from Animal Education with Cole Shirk. So be sure to tune into that where we look at uh, animals and superheroes. So uh, where were we? Yes, the annoying thing that Skrelp takes 400 candies to evolve. Uh, so the abilities of Skrelp, this is quite interesting. Poison Point or Poison Touch, obviously it's water and poison type, so that is quite an intriguing ability to have for a cute little piece of kelp. Uh, its hidden ability, however, is adaptability, which again kind of is rather ironic and well thought out given that it does look like 
it, it's very good at adapting and blending into its environment because that's how it does survive, which gives us a nice big hint into its real life animal comparison, which we'll get to in part three after we look more deeply into Scrub and Launcher. Ah, oh, hello, Kathy. Hello, hello. Hi, Rita. Ah, Scrub says 50. Oh, was it 50? I thought it was 400. Oh, that's exciting because I was thinking, oh, good golly gee, I'm going to have to walking with the scrub. Although I probably would enjoy walking with the scrub if I did have to walk with it, but that's a lot of walking. Oh, thanks, John. That's exciting. Uh, yes, so, um, <laughs> you remind me of some. Does he remind you of you, Rita? Uh, so Skrelp is a poor swimmer. We should probably put that out there, although that would make it really difficult for it to be a bunny and walk behind you if it's a poor person. It's kind of predation from their enemies. And it, it, some of the Pokedex entries said that Skrelp will ride seaweed to travel the ocean. They will hang on the bits of seaweed and float around, um, which I can imagine must be quite the sight because, yeah, I don't know, I'd really like to hang out with Skrelp and Alola, the nice warm Alolan waters, which are after that of Hawaii. In fact, in the Alola region, it has been noted that Skrelp uh, are quite happy living alongside Delmise, the weird ship anchor Pokemon, if you know what that one is. So yeah, that was quite fascinating. And for Skrelp, its main food source is rotten seaweed. So kind of essentially what they hang on to and blend in with will be their main food source. So that is Skrelp, the mock kelp type Pokemon. And uh, I should mention, however, that if other Pokemon happen to come to feast on the seaweed, apparently Skrelp will feast on them instead. And that last bit, Skrelp will feast on them instead, is a quote from one of the Pokedex entries that kind of caught me off guard, that they would uh, go after other little Pokemon, which got me thinking, what other Pokemon would that be? And uh, yeah, you eat seaweed. Oh my gosh. If, um, yeah, if you guys are watching, <laughs> me and seaweed, I, I recently discovered that seaweed, the crispy seaweed that you get from here in the UK from Chinese takeaway isn't actually seaweed. And it made me really sad and kind of angry because yeah, I thought I was eating seaweed. And uh, yeah, the other day I did try to make crispy kale, as I call it now. I refuse to call it crispy seaweed because it is not seaweed, it is kale. But that's a whole other topic for another day. I could go off on a tangent for that. Yeah, cabbage, I know, I know. And yes, John, kind of dark indeed. Speaking, another shameless plug for a future episode. Uh, I'll be looking into the wonderful world of the new Pokemon Snap game, which is so exciting that they're finally bringing one out. I cannot wait to play this game. Uh, I was a huge fan of the game uh, back on N64. And in one of the trailers, you can see Pidgeot swooping in to take a Magikarp and then fly away with it. And apparently, like, people like myself were also blown away to see, you know, the real life circle of life in the Pokemon world. Cause it's something I, I didn't ever really thought about while playing the games, but it makes sense when you think about it, you know? And so yeah, that Skrub will eat other Pokemon when they come to feast on seaweed, they'll feast on them instead. Indeed, John, very dark indeed. So that was a bit of background information about our friend Skrelp, the uh, one of the new Pokemon that has been released in Pokemon Go as of today at 10 a.m. for Rivals Week, which is very exciting because they've released a few friends over this year, but I was really excited to see not one, but two new Pokemon, and of course their evolved forms as well. So the rival to Skrelp is Clauncher. Now, Clauncher is a water type Pokemon that also was first introduced in Generation 6. It is known as the Water Gun Pokemon. Now, it evolves into Clotzer at level 37, or as we found with 50 candies in Pokemon Go. So definitely use your berries, use the Mega Evolve trick that I talked about earlier to make sure you get those candies if they are quite rare, like they have been for at least me here today. And so, yeah, and he also says 50 to evolve. Excellent. So deep fried spring greens. I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, so the ability of Clauncher is Mega Launcher. Now this ability, I had to look into a little bit more. Well, because Clauncher, well, uh, if you look the Pokemon up, unfortunately, well, actually, I have my Pokemon Go game here. I'll pull up my Clauncher. Uh, they have quite, oh, it's a big Mankey party. It was Mankey uh, 
spotlight hour and my house was overrun with minkies, so apologies. <laughs> they, oh yeah, I did catch a bunch of minkies. Oh, there we go. Here's a plunger. So there we go. So it has a big claw. It has a little tiny one and then a big one. Uh, so the ability of Mega Launcher is the signature move of Clauncher and Klotzer. But also Blastoise can have it too because of course he has like the water cannons on the back. Good old, good old Squirtle's final evolved form, Blastoise. So yeah, only technically three Pokemon have this ability of Mega Launcher. So as you can imagine, <laughs> having one gigantic claw and one little baby claw is for balance. And uh, because of this large claw, they can't really swim straight. So what they do instead is apparently Klotzer fires compressed water from its claw to move itself around instead, which I find quite interesting. Um, but it, they also use this to shoot down prey or break rocks. So yeah, talk about rivals. You don't want to get on the bad side of this Klotzer Pokemon. Because yeah, with that big claw, they can do a few different things. And uh, yeah, it doesn't sound particularly friendly, does it? Uh, so let's see. Yeah, uh, Mankey. Yeah, what is Mankey? Mankey is a fighting type Pokemon. Um, it, it's quite territorial, to say the least. Uh, one of my favorite bits was, Clauncher looks like Rita. Katie, be nice. Be nice to poor Rita. Um, <laughs> but Mankey is a very, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a fierce Pokemon because uh, they're quite a fighting type. Well, literally a fighting type, but the one Ash had in the anime, it actually stole his hat, which was quite entertaining. Um, but yeah, Minky, Minky's a, yeah. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Minky, I'm not going to lie, especially when there's like 50 of them around my house during spotlight hour. It's a bit terrifying. Uh, so, Clauncher and the ridiculous uh, claw, the big oversized claw. Now, sometimes this claw can fall off. And well, as they should, because that is like their main kind of source of protection and defense and, you know, hunting down prey, apparently, they go on the down low for a bit. They chill out and not really get into much trouble while the claw regrows, interestingly enough. And apparently, talk about dark side, John. <laughs> apparently, this meat inside of this claw is quite tasty. And it's actually considered a delicacy in places like the Galar region, which for those of you who may not know, the Galar region is a place that I feel was very much based on the United Kingdom, of all things. So yeah, they have a town that represents London, which I thought was rather rubbish, uh, but they have uh, some amazing new Pokemon that were introduced. In fact, I can't wait to look at some of them in upcoming Pokemon Animal Comparisons videos. But speaking of my favorite Pokemon of Galar, I'm glad you asked. I know you didn't, but I have to mention the Cormorant, or Cramorant, as it's known. I loved Cramorant! In fact, I made a video on it because I love him so much. In fact, in my wallet, which is not up here, uh, I keep a Pokemon card that my husband got for me of Cramorant because <laughs> I love that Pokemon so much. He's the most dorky looking thing. It's based on a Cormorant, but its eyes don't look straight and he just looks so funny. But he's so powerful. I trained mine. Uh, mine's called Dave. I don't know why. My dad's name <laughs> is Dave, but there's no connection. Actually, there might be because Cormorant's a water Pokemon and my dad's a surfer, so maybe that's why. But I don't know. He just looked like a Dave to me. And he, he has this magical ability where uh, if he can like shoot out Pokemon, I know that sounds weird, but uh, check the video. I'll put the link in the description below. But he literally became the Pokemon that I wiped the board with. Like Leon, you know, fighting the final battles at the end. I was like, Dave, go! <laughs> Dave just destroyed the field. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see Dave, hopefully, in the anime. <sighs> yes, yeah, keep it away from Toy Story aliens. Why does the claw fall off? I'm not sure. They don't really explain in the Pokedex, and I don't think in the anime. I wonder if because it does seem, like, from what I've gathered, it's quite a feisty Pokemon. Maybe it gets into hustle and tussles, and maybe it falls off that way. But uh, it does. 
it fall off. Uh, and I wonder also, because I mentioned the meat, I wonder if because the claw falls off, if then people find the claw and then use that meat, or if they actually hunt foster to hunt and then use their meat for food. Who knows? Um, but yeah, they don't quite clarify. And I don't think they would show something like that in the anime, but it does lend one to, to think about this thing. So welcome to any of our new friends. <laughs> we like to go on tangents here on Shelby on Safari. I'm Shelby, I'm a wild animal biologist, but a Pokemon trainer as well. And I love doing animal comparisons uh, from anything from pop culture. We did one on the Harry Potter Hogwarts houses a while ago. But tonight is all about Pokemon because it is Pokemon Rivals Week. And yeah, I caught a Klotzer, but I have it here. And yeah, in the beginning, I talked about some of my top tips for the Rivals Week coming ahead, including two of the field research quests that I definitely am keeping a lookout for, but then also mega evolving either Blastoise or Gyarados. If you know you're going to be catching Klotzer, well, Klotzer. Cluster. I knew that was going to happen at some point. <laughs> Cluster or Skrelp because, and I didn't have water up here. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely mega evolve some of those friends. So welcome. Metatite spawn like crazy right now. I know. And Makuhita as well. It's really interesting to see a bunch of fighting types. Also, I would check if you haven't already on your in Pokemon Go, check your medals. I know I still need quite a few fighting types and fairy types and dragon types, of course, but now would be the perfect time if you still need the fighting type catch metal of awesomeness to catch as many fighting types as possible. So then that way uh, you complete the metal quest. Woohoo! So friends, now the moment y'all been waiting for, and at least I've been waiting for to tell you guys, is the real life animals that are like Plotzer and Skrelp. I hope you're ready to go and buckle in, friends, because there are some crazy animals in our world that I can't wait to introduce you to. So first up, we'll look at Skrelp. Now, Skrelp, as you guys have known, if you've looked it up or are familiar with the Pokemon, it is, you know, the mock kelp Pokemon. It does look like a leafy sea dragon. So it should come as no surprise that I'm going to be comparing it to a leafy sea dragon. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> In specifically, I'm going to be looking at the common leafy sea dragon. Well, the common sea dragon, sorry, the common sea dragon, aka the weedy sea dragon. So this is essentially a really cool looking fish. I think that's the thing that can surprise a lot of people is, you know, we see it, it it's in the same uh, uh, family as seahorses. Uh, Synegathidae? Synegathidae? Yeah, I think it's Synegathidae. I'll put it in the description down below as well. Um, but they are in the same family as seahorses, so they are indeed fish, which is really cool because when you look at them, you're like, whoa, what is that? They really are in a family of their own, but they are indeed fish. Also uh, in Synegathidae are the pipefish as well. So pipefish, seahorses, and sea dragons. So there are actually three different species of sea dragon, but they are all found in, you know, southern, southeastern, and western Australia. So they are in the southern hemisphere. We have the leafy sea dragon, and then the ruby sea dragon, which was relatively recently discovered, which is super exciting. And then the one we will be looking at, the common sea dragon, aka the weedy sea dragon. So, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. oh no! Crayfish, crawfish boil next weekend, and you're not fond of seafood? Oh no. Peanuts to boil for you instead. Boil peanuts? Really? What do they taste like, peanuts boiled? Have you ever tried it, or are you just saying that? Let me know, John. Let me know. Um, is it in Texas? Metatite, what's in Texas? What's in Texas? I'm far behind on the comments. Um, but yeah, John, let me know to boil? Hmm. Hmm. Well, couldn't you just have barbecue? Ooh, barbecue. Oh, makes me think of good barbecue sauce. Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. I'm losing, I'm focused. I'm going to get back focused. We're talking sea dragons. <laughs> the leafy sea dragon, the ruby sea dragon, and the weedy sea dragon, which is the species we'll be focusing on. However, I do want to briefly mention the mating ritual of sea dragons, because as you know, you know, we love looking at the amazing world of Pokemon, but equally 
the amazing world of animals in our own world, which is so cool. And with sea dragons, when they mate, when the mating ritual happens, so they reach sexual maturity about roughly about one to two years of age. So they've, they've kind of been around. They've been around the ocean. They've been hanging out. Um, but they will sway and dance for their mate, which is rather sweet. And uh, as you can imagine, with kind of leafy looking appendages, that must look pretty cool. And the female will then, should the dance impress her enough, will then pass up to 250 bright pink eggs to her mate. Um, and the mate, the male, will actually be the one to carry the eggs for the time being, which is quite sweet. So he will carry them on his tail and fertilize them. And the special part of the tail is called the brood patch. And uh, at this location of the tail, he'll they'll be supplied with oxygen and things like that. And they'll incubate for about nine weeks, which uh, that's a nice time, <laughs> nice time for incubation. Uh, not much longer than that. So yeah, up to nine weeks, they'll incubate. And uh, you might be thinking, whoa, 250, that's a lot. However, however, roughly only about 20 of the little baby sea dragons will reach sexual maturity. So that's why they have a lot because they're quite fragile as eggs. And then of course, when they hatch, they're quite tiny and quite vulnerable, you know, to predation, to, you know, just the ocean currents, a variety of different factors. And so out of the 250, well, up to 250 eggs, only about 20 will reach sexual maturity. So not that many, to be honest. Um, and the weedy sea dragon itself, I should say, they get up to about 18 inches long. And like Skrelt, they will rely on camouflage to blend in for protection because they too are not very strong swimmers. And so they, you know, just float along hiding in the seaweed, <laughs> hiding in the kelp. Um, but, well, Going back to food, we love food here. I love food. And apparently my friends do too. Boiled peanuts are real big. Oh, and you live in Louisiana. Oh, oh, Cajun food. See, we love food. <laughs> and I love food. Um, so speaking of food, oh my gosh, John, Cajun food. I love, I love spicy food. So, oh, the few times that I've had Cajun food, muy bueno. Uh, so with food, Skrelp's main diet is seaweed, right? We found out that Skrelp occasionally will eat other Pokemon that come to eat the seaweed, but their main diet is seaweed. Weedy sea dragons, on the other hand, they are all carnivores. They are carnivorous, man. They eat tiny crustaceans. They eat sea lice. They eat mycid shrimp. They eat fish larvae. They will eat it all. So yeah. And you may be wondering... <laughs> How do they eat? They look like seaweed. Well, they have no teeth, so they don't really chew their food. Instead, they feed by sucking prey into their pipe-like mouths. Now, the crazy thing about this is that uh, they have specially developed bones to help with this, and of course, muscles as well to allow them to generate the suction required to suck in little crustaceans, little shrimps, and things like that. So yeah, that is the weedy sea dragon, and rather fantastic. Um, Although I did mention that they are, you know, in the fam same family as pipe horses and seahorses. As some of you may know, seahorses, their tails are prehensile. Well, our poor leafy sea dragons, they aren't good swimmers and they also don't have prehensile tails. So poor little sea dragons. Um, but uh, yeah, so that is a bit of info about the amazing world of sea dragons. Let me know in the comments what you think. I mean, have you heard of sea dragons before? Do you like sea dragons? I think they're really cool looking. I mean, I love that they have that appearance of, you know, being able to blend in. They have some really fantastic camouflage, both to hide them from predators, but then also from prey as well. So then they can sneak up and uh, suck them up, <laughs> which it sounds really ridiculous to say, but that's how they do it. And so, yeah, not heard of a sea dragon. Yeah, they are cool. I am a, a big fan of the leafy sea dragon, and that's why I'm really excited to get Skrelp in Pokemon Go for Pokemon Go Rivals Week, which is the reason why we're all here to talk Pokemon, Pokemon Rivals, and all that stuff. Our friend John, you've caught uh, Quancher already. You know, I've got a few of them. I haven't yet evolved it. 
And uh, yeah, let's talk now about Clauncher, the real life animal that I think is like Clauncher. Now, with this, I should say, you know, there are a few Pokemon where the resemblance it is undeniable, um, but with a lot of the species that I like to do in my Pokemon animal comparisons, it's just my opinion. It's just something fun and I see some correlation between them and I go, ooh, that's really cool. And so I should say with Klotzer, they there's no designated uh, from our Pokemon uh, kahunas, the big kahunas at Pokemon, there is no specific Pokemon or <laughs> no specific animal that they mention is like Klotzer. But I do want to introduce you guys to, well, first of all, the group of animals that I think, well, it, it's rather undeniable. So y'all have your phones out or your computers out. I would love for you guys to look up the pistol prawn. That's right, we are gonna meet the Alpheus genus of shrimp. This genus is the pistol <laughs> prawn. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Oh my gosh, talk about the real life gun slingers, guys. These little prawn friends are insane. And uh, these are the ones I'm so excited to talk to you about because I could not believe it. So yeah, the pistol shrimp. So like Clauncher, as you guys will see when you look it up, they have an oversized claw. And this claw is also used for defense, but then, killing prey. So, well, their prey is also small inverts as well. Um, which actually I should mention the whole rivals week thing. I don't know, John, if you know, or if anyone, let me know in the comments down below, but I don't quite get why Skrelp and Clauncher are rivals. I couldn't find anything. I don't remember them being like in the anime as being like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Cause it's not as simple as like Bakuhita and Metatite where, you know, they're both fighting types or Nidoran and Nidoran, male and female version, you know, they're kind of battling it out. I think the connection that I'm gonna go with between why they are rivals is I think, at least looking at their real life animal counterparts, they both might be rivals fighting for the same food, which the myosid shrimp. So the leafy sea dragons, they like myosid shrimp. And then the pistol prawns, they also like myosid shrimp. So that's the connection I'm going for because there's nothing quite like having a rival when you guys are fighting for the same food. Because I don't know about you guys, but I take my food very seriously. And if someone tries to eat it, you bet I'm gonna defend it. Uh, so <laughs> in fact, I, I, I just had, if you saw my Instagram, I went out for the first time in months, uh, to eat and we went, uh, the husband took me to our new local pub, which was really exciting. And I had passion fruit cheesecake and oh, gee golly gee guys, it was fantastic. And I could see him eyeing it, you know, that casual little eye when like you're eating your own dessert and you're like, mm -hmm. and then you see them ever so slightly look at your dessert and then look back to theirs and like eat it and then look again. And I was after the second glance, I thought, you know what? He's treated me to dinner. It's been a very nice meal. I might, I might let him have a bite. And I, I did, which I feel quite proud of that I let him have a bite and he can hear me now. And dear, I really appreciate you buying me a piece of passion fruit cheesecake. Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, like if someone like if he didn't ask for it and he just came over with his spoon, I would dap that spoon away so fast with my own spoon. Like let me know in the comments below if you're that protective over your food as well. So that's why I think the, um, the Klotzer and the Skrelp might be, you know, fighting each other. Although Skrelp, uh, well, he you know, he does eat Pokemon. So maybe they are fighting over food. Anyway, so going back to the pistol shrimp. So they use their oversized claw for obviously defense, you know, to kind of scare away predators, but then also killing prey. Um, and so let's go more in depth about this claw because it's truly like a real life bubble bee. So when the claw snaps shut, it shoots out water, which creates a low pressure air bubble behind it, if you will. But this is no ordinary bubble, guys. This bubble is so hot and so full of pressure that when it pops, it creates a flash of light. A nice little, poo, literal flash of light, which is insane. Um, and so when it does pop, 
it actually causes the prey to be stunned or even killed if they're that close to the pup, just because of the pressure of the forest and, you know, the heat as well. Um, and so when I read that, I was thinking, oh my gosh, that's a real life bubble bee, you know, like maybe not an onslaught of bubbles, but, you know, a big bubble power enough to be like, knock one out, uh, KO. <laughs> so you may be thinking, okay, that sounds pretty pretty cool, right? But what about the shrimp? Because if the pressure is big enough when the bubble pops, like it's going to go many directions, it might stun the prey. But what about the poor little shrimp who caused the destructive bubble in the first place? <laughs> well, guys, they have developed orbital hoods, like Quantra has actually, to help protect their eyes from the shock wave. And with this in mind, though, the little orbital hoods, you know, protecting their eyes, it has led to poor Cluncher, I imagine, as well as the real life Pokemon comparison of the pistol shrimp having poor vision. So these orbital hoods, yeah, they protect them, but also kind of limits their vision, which we'll come into later. Now, as <laughs> Joey doesn't share food. Yes, Joey doesn't share food. I, I love that episode. I didn't relate to Joey more so than I did in that episode of Friends. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> Florida's most famous gunslinger, the pistol shrimp. That's right, John. So uh, speaking of um, that, uh, I want to bring into your guys' attention, obviously, pistol shrimp. There's a lot of different types of pistol shrimp, but there is one that reminded me specifically of Klotzer just because of the color. And it was the big claw snapping shrimp, which seems to resemble the coloration most of the beautiful kind of blue hued coloration of Klotzer. Uh, they are native to the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. So over in that part of the world. And these guys hide and, or well, they burrow under rocks for protection during the day. And which is quite, trippy considering they have like a big claw. But anyways, they hide for protection in burrows during the day. Um, and they are in fact the largest of all the snapping shrimp with some adults ranging up to 10 millimeters in length, which it might not sound like a lot, but remember guys, they got a big claw as well. They're pretty impressive. And uh, in terms of sexual dimorphism, I thought it was pretty interesting to find that both male and females are relatively the same size but there is a slight difference in terms of the claw size where the males have slightly larger claws of the big claws than the females. So not much difference, but again, going into the amazing world of lifespans, I was surprised to find that these guys can live for up to four years. So four years of age for the fun big claw snapping shrimp. Now, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, bye John. Oh, have a good day at work. Um, I gotta say, first of all, I need some water. Uh, but secondly, I gotta mention this crazy relationship. I know it's Rivals Week, so I'm gonna ask for your forgiveness for this one, guys, because I found out that the shrimp, the pistol shrimp, actually have a mutualistic relationship with the gobies. So in particular, for this big clawed uh, pistol shrimp, they have a relationship with what's called the Nine Bar Prawn Gobi. That's a fun name, Nine Bar Prawn Gobi. And this, <laughs> this how, how do I begin this relationship? Well, okay, you remember the orbital hoods of the shrimp, you know, the little ones to protect their eyes from the big snap and flash of light when they snap their claw? Well, they have poor vision. And so they could be quite vulnerable to predation, right? You'd think, okay, they can't really see, they can't see predators coming. They might not even really be able to see prey, but that's where the gobies come in. So the little goby fish, they got pretty keen eyesight. They know what's going around around them. They're keeping an eye out on things. And the goby, however, cannot burrow. But the one thing that our little shrimp friends can do, yes. They can burrow. In fact, some, some species are quite like OCD about keeping it clean and things like that. And so our friends, the prawnies, prawnies and the gobies, they, they need each other. So that's why it's a mutualistic relationship because the goby will keep an eye out for predators. In fact, they'll do like a cool little tail wiggle dance that will alert 
our little prom friend, he'll feel it with his antennae. He'll be like, oh, something's up. And then they'll both retreat into the burrow, which the prawn helps keep clean, which I thought was rather fantastic. So a nice way to end the live stream by talking, alas, not about rivals for Pokemon Go Rivals Week, but the concept of, you know, friends helping friends and a nice example of a mutualistic relationship. So I'd be curious to see uh, if that comes into play in the Pokemon world. I mean, obviously, one that comes into play was my very first Pokemon animal compar comparison with a uh, Slowpoke and Shellder, which you can find in the description down below after this, if I remember to put it there. <laughs> you can always find it in my animal pop culture playlist. But yeah, good old mutualistic uh, relationships there. So yeah, that's that's about it. But I, I just had to share that mutualistic relationship with you guys of the gobies and the pistol shrimp because I find it absolutely fascinating, the world of animals and how it manages to still surprise us. There are so many animals that are yet to be discovered, especially like invertebrates and you know the animals of the deep, the deep sea. And even with the animals we do know about, you know, not everybody knows everything. So I love creating these videos and raising awareness of, say, you know, the weedy sea dragon and the pistol shrimp, which have some real life superpowers, whether that's camouflage like Skrelp has with blending into its environment, or Klotzer and the pistol shrimp with their crazy big claws that can pretty much have a real world bubble beam. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I mean, I'd love to hear from you guys before we wrap up about some of your favorite rivalries. Maybe not just in Pokemon Go, but uh, you know, I mentioned Maui and Kiana. They have quite a fierce rivalry. I think of Ash and Gary, of course. Um, Let's see, in terms of Pokemon, oh goodness, what was her name? Is it Dawn? Dawn and uh, Paul, no, Paul was, I didn't like Paul. Oh, what was that? I named, I named my Roselia after him. Let me check. Yes, let me know in the comments kind of your favorite rivalries, because obviously rivals reek. Roserade. Drew! <laughs> I did name my Roserade after him because he had a Roserade. Uh, so yeah, Dawn and Drew, I think it was. They were quite competitive. And uh, maybe it wasn't Dawn. Was it Dawn? May? Ash has had a lot of companions. Uh, but yeah, that was one of my favorite rivalries because that was nice because eventually Drew became not too much stuck up. Uh, what else, what else, what else? I mean, Ash and Gary still seems to dominate it all. Toby and Gibble. <laughs> oh, Pikachu, yes. Pikachu has quite a few rivals. I think one of my favorite ones that they recently shouted out in the new anime, The Pokemon Journeys, was Pikachu and Lieutenant Sarge's Pikachu. That's not a Pikachu, that's a Raichu, because that's how Ash got his uh, lightning badge Thunderbolt badge, whatever badge it is from Lieutenant Sarge uh, by Pikachu defeating a Raichu. I thought that was rather cool and a nice shout out because Lieutenant Sarge had apparently talked about Ash. And so when Ash went back and it was somebody else, they had said, they're like, oh my gosh, you're Ash and you have the Pikachu. I thought that was really cool. All the cool shout outs. But yeah, lots of rivals, lots of exciting things happening in Pokemon Go. I mean, they just released as well news of the Friendship Week which is happening coming up uh, on a day, which I thought was quite ironic given it's Rivals Week and then surprise, one day of friendship where like trading, you could go increase lucky trades, but might do a live stream on that, who knows? But yeah, I was just really excited to tell you guys about the real life animals that remind me of Skrelp and Klotzer, the Weedy Sea Dragon and the Pistol Shrimp, which are <laughs> quite fascinating animals. It's just a blast to see how, you know, the Pokemon creators and designers have taken inspiration from the amazing world around us and created this world. And, you know, it, it still surprises me to this day when I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like a so-and-so. And then you see just how similar they are because some of them, like when you see Klotzer, you think, no, there's no real animal like that. That's totally fiction. And then you find out, oh my gosh, 
It's a real thing. It is crazy indeed. So I thank you so much, guys, for joining me over this past hour, taking a look at that. I wish you the best of luck for shiny hunting, for getting scroll, getting Klotzer over this next few weeks as Rivals Week has started and it ends on Sunday the 18th at 8 p.m. So be sure to get your field research task, whether that be of win a raid, in which you can either uh, your reward would be to catch Skrelp or to catch Klotzer. Or, of course, uh, be sure to get, if you needed, the Mega Lobud, lo Mega Lope Honey energy to get the field research task of win in the Pokemon Go Battle League. And then, as I mentioned before, I can't stress enough the importance of Mega Evolving a water type, seeing as Skrelp is water and poison and Klotzer is water type, you will get. If you mega evolve a water type Pokemon, you will get that extra candy to help you evolve them sooner, which is super exciting. So friends, with that, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you can know when I continue on with the crazy adventures of doing live streams or release new videos, which typically come out every Friday. Well, at least every Friday, if not a few additional shorts here and there randomly. But I'm also on Instagram at Shelby on Safari, as well as Clubhouse, as well as Facebook. And I'm at Shelby on Safari on pretty much everything. So hopefully I'll see you guys around on there. Um, on Instagram, I love interacting with you guys and getting your opinion on certain things and hearing from you about what videos you want to see next, including future upcoming Pokemon videos. Uh, one of my friends actually messaged me. They were at a shop the other day a fish store and they saw a catfish and uh kiram actually if kiram watches this it was so sweet to see you message me and ask for a catfish and uh the pokemon comparison for that so i will be working on that in the future and of course this friday will be a celebration of all things bats for bat appreciation day with my buddy cole from animal education with cole's shirt so i can't wait for you guys to meet him if you haven't already he is incredible and he does some fantastic interviews with collections around the world he's really taken this past year in stride because he usually goes to collections and visits animals and gets behind the scenes with keepers but obviously the past year has been a bit different and so yeah he's made it to go on a globe trotting adventure. One of my favorite videos of his was with the Habu snake, which was insane. So friends, with that in mind, best of luck for Rivals Week. Let me know what you get up to. If you catch a Skrelp, if you kept a, catch a Klotzer. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys. Hopefully y'all do catch at least one of each so then you can walk with it as your buddy to finally evolve it. But that's it for me. I hear Maui crying at the door. It is his dinner time. So I'm going to say adios, amigos, and I will see you on Friday for Friday's new video. Have a good week, guys. Bye. Bye, Rita. Bye, Katie. Bye, Alice.